the countdown for the next European winter is around the corner. Russian gas supplies run low. Even if the EU strategic reserves are filled to 90% of capacity, in an excellent hypothetical scenario, 14 of 27 EU countries have resources for less than 30 days of average imports at the peak of the winter season. 30 days tops, it's what gas in Europe will last, with temperatures ranging from 20 to 50 Fahrenheit in a Russian absence. With an ongoing Russia-Ukraine war that sees no end, an alternative gas supplier to Europe is paramount. Such historic opportunities don't come along often. Nigeria wants to make history and step in as an alternative supplier. Let's dive right in to this ongoing novel. We need funds. There is an urgent matter for the Nigerian Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. In the corridors, Silva asked for the EU to increase investments in gas and hydrocarbons to meet Europe's standards. And he has proven a point. Nigeria has an estimated gas reserve of 209 trillion cubic feet. And as it stands, it can produce 1,780 billion cubic feet, 22% more than last year. There are plenty of natural reserves to supply Europe's demand. So, it's a sudden dangerous ground for EU energy sovereignty that Russia provides 30 to 40% of its gas needs. There seems to be an indifferent attitude from oil and gas companies such as Shell, Eni, or Total Energies in the gas sector towards Nigeria's development. According to Silva, over 70 billion in investments came to Africa in the last 10 years. But only four came to Nigeria. Just a mere 6% of attention to the highest GDP in the continent standing at 514.5 billion. As Silva asks for investments in the European Union, we ask for your like, so you can invest in that subscribe button, notification bell on set, and keep up to date for our following videos. Russian 240 billion hit. If there is one country with a clear leader when it comes to influencing, it's Germany. With a gross domestic product of over 3.5 trillion euros, it's the largest in Europe. Nonetheless, their dependency on Russian gas is an Achilles heel. If the Russian supply suddenly shuts off, the country could lose 240 billion over the next two years. It will lead Europe's largest economy to a sharp recession. A new sixth round of sanctions against Russia is being discussed. Some EU officials touched a nerve, discussing Putin's oil and gas exports. But Germany is resilient. In the short term, a ban on Russian gas would be like a direct attack on Germany, with 46% dependent on that used to heat homes, generate electricity, and power factories. You can't just cut gas in the short term. Abruptly. This process takes years. In one day, the EU decided to cut out Russia from SWIFT. To cut gas, on the other hand, takes years. If Germany goes into recession by an arbitrary ban, like a domino effect, other countries in the EU could easily do the same. The Nigerian Paradox Nigeria, in 2022, was the leader of oil and gas producers in the region, with over 37 billion barrels of crude oil reserves. Therefore, the shortage of Europe energy could be an extraordinary opportunity for Nigeria's economy. An economy with increasing annual inflation of 15.2% due to its fuel shortage since January. A lack of fuel of all things, after importing substandard fuel, there were weeks of severe scarcity and long queues at filling stations. Transport's costs rise, thereby affecting goods and commodities. Imagine how Nigerian infrastructure is, that they have to import fuel. They have over 37 billion barrels of crude, and yet they have to import fuel for transport. That's a paradox that many developing countries have. The infrastructure needed is not just a short-term opportunity if the EU agrees to attract investors for Nigeria. It's also a chance to get out of the crisis and develop for years. Africa's largest oil producer relies almost entirely on imported fuel without functional refineries. Lacking infrastructure There is a substantial number to look at in the Nigerian economy. The oil sector provides 95% of foreign exchange earnings and 80% of budgetary revenues. The present dynamic between the European Union to ban oil imports from Russia by increasing trade with other non-Russian economies, at the same time 
the Russian government promises to cut gas supplies if sanctions continue. With this risk back and forward, measures have to be made. A war can escalate quickly with a nuclear holder on the opposite table. That's why Nigeria is speeding up production. It has to be ready at first sight at Europe's shortage. Due to its lack of infrastructure, it is not an easy task for oil. Nigeria relies heavily on its offshore projects. 65% of total production comes from outside sources. It needs patience, a rare luxury for such urgent matters since their deep water projects still haven't come online to improve production. A total lack of essential investments will diminish that opportunity to replace Russia if it can't materialize a secure supply in the future to meet local, regional, and international demand. A Pipeline of Hope For gas, on the other hand, Nigeria has enormous potential, with increasing scalability if it's done right. An estimated reserve of 209 trillion cubic feet will produce 1,780 billion cubic feet in 2022. Europe can start making plans to acquire some of it. There is a silver lining to this current crisis for Nigeria, buried in steel. A 2.565-mile multi-billion trans-Saharan natural gas pipeline being built in collaboration with Nigeria, Niger, and Algeria will enable a historical integration of the region. They are connecting trans-Mediterranean, Magar Europe, Medgaz, and Galsi pipelines for Europe to leverage the West and North Africa's oil and gas resources to meet demand. The Trans-Saharan Pipeline is a significant opportunity for public and private stakeholders across Africa, facilitating the continent's potential to operate its energy industry independently across the entire value chain. Nigerians waiting in long lines to refill their cars will be a lousy memory if the soberness of their energy does justice to their rich natural resources. Always diversify. There is a master plan for the EU to diversify. If things were to continue as if nothing ever happened without any war from Russia, by 2030, the EU would depend on the Russian gas supply by an unbalanced 70%. That's a lot of power for Russia over Europe's energy sector. As we have seen before, it will be a complete loss of sovereignty for Germany. The plan is to get out of that ongoing trend to non-Russian markets and pipelines. By a two-hour flight, Algeria, a friendly neighbor of Nigeria, announced that Sonatrach's state-owned oil and gas group reported a $40 billion investment to connect Algeria directly to Spain. But Algeria's gas isn't readily available. If they want to look for further options, there lies the MEG, a high-capacity pipeline that goes through Mafheb Europe. But there is a troubled middleman, Morocco. Last October, political tension rose between Algiers and Rabat for 10% gas revenues as a fee that Algeria did not agree to pay to the Kingdom of Morocco. It resulted in the contract between them not being renewed. A pipeline is not an easy negotiation. Many territories pass through them. Therefore, it is important to never rely on little things that come and go and see the bigger picture. A 10% fee from the Moroccan Kingdom is nothing to the revenue it will attract exporting gas directly to Europe. That said, a 10% of billion dollars to a developing country is not exactly short change. The Unveiled Pharaon On the other side of the African continent lies a thousand years force. According to the OAPEC, 1.4 million tons of LNG in the second quarter compared to zero LNG exports in the same period last year. Egyptian gas exports grew by 1.4 million tons of LNG in just a year. It is an outstanding growth for Egyptians, but there is a catch. LNG is the only gas they export. Thus, it is not connected by a European pipeline network. China is not indifferent to that potential since it has offered long-term country contracts on good terms. So, for Egypt, keeping a superpower on the gas supply chain makes sense. Even Libya's natural reserves are 1.4 billion cubic meters, but the country is so politically divided, there lies so much instability that the Europeans can't engage politically or economically. More for Nigeria to Europe. Conclusion You are getting the point, for many reasons, the stability and economic growth Algeria and Niger allow the construction of a 4,000-kilometer-long trans-Saharan gas pipeline. Politic stability and a straightforward project in mind with a long-term view are paramount to getting that supply up and running in time for Europe. A 
A troubled past in the region could testify that the security situation in the Sahel region and tensions between Algier and Naimi did not allow the mega project to go ahead. It wasn't until 2021 that Algeria and Niger reopened their border, thus pipeline construction could continue. In 2019, Europe imported 108 billion cubic meters of LNG. More than 12 billion came from Nigeria. It won't be a quick fix by any means. Still, with long-term investment and the EU, especially Germany, diversifying their dependency on Russian gas, we can see a robust future development for both parties. Africa's top 10 countries in natural gas resources are a natural ally to Europe in energy sovereignty. Sovereignty from the YouTube algorithm is what your like gets us, and a subscription to show support enforces our already good relations. We don't ask for a pipeline, only a click on that bell will suffice. Stay tuned until next time.